Hi folks, I'm Mike, and I hope you're well. Around about three months ago, I reviewed these headphones, the MM500s from Audeezy. I said at the time that I felt they were the best headphones that I'd ever used for mixing, and I stand by that. I've used them every day since, and I absolutely love them. But they're also the most expensive headphones I've ever used in the studio. Now, to find out why I think that their price tag of $1,699 can still be warranted under some circumstances, follow the link up here or in the description down below to watch my original review. Now a number of you went to the Audeezy website at the time and came back to me and said hey there's some cheaper headphones on there could you take a look at those as well and that's why we're here today to look at the LCD XC headphones from Audeezy. Now these are closed back headphones so a little bit of a different beast but we'll talk about that a little later on. Before we dive in to why these headphones, which are $400 cheaper, may be worth your while. Let's take a quick look at the specs. The LCD XC headphones are the closed back version of the popular LCD X headphones. Now these are the 2021 version, so be aware that some other reviews may be for an older version. They've got a frequency response of 10 hertz to 50 kilohertz, a maximum SPL of 130 decibels, an impedance of 20 ohms, and they're really not too hard to drive. Unlike the vast majority of studio headphones that we see, these use planar magnetic drivers, more on that later. Just like the MM500s, they come in an impressive lockable case where you'll find some keys, a certificate of authenticity, some links to a user guide and some downloads, and my favourite cable of all time of all of the headphones I've ever tried. The build oozes quality and comfort, starting off with these incredibly thick leather pads, which are obviously tapered, leaving you in no doubt as to which way to wear them. These are super soft and comfy, and the inner oval shape measures around about 70 by 50 centimeters so they'll enclose some pretty big ears. These lush pads are attached to some fairly sizable metal cups which are around about 11 centimeters in diameter. These in turn connect to the height adjuster via a metal hinge. There's a little bit of swivel here for comfort but these headphones are not foldable. Finally, we have a metal headband and leather strap. And by the way, Ordees also offers a non-leather option. The braided cable connects with dual four pin XLRs, which terminates through a quarter inch jack. Overall, if you expect that $1,300 headphones should have exceptional build quality and use quality materials and components, you won't be disappointed. But let's face it, that's only part of the story. Ordees headphones always seem to be breaking records with me and and this time it's with the weight. There's a lot of mass here and a big chunk of that is metal as well. There's no way that we could expect these to be light at all. But I will say the first time you wear them, I reckon you'll definitely notice that these are pretty heavy headphones. They actually weigh 677 grams. To put that in perspective, most of my other headphones in, in my studio weigh less than 300 grams. So this is pretty noticeably heavy. Now it's slightly made up for by the fact that they are super, super comfortable. They do feel well sort of supported on your head, but I think it's definitely something you should take into consideration if that's gonna be important to you. Now a part of the reason they are so heavy is because of the driver type they use. That's planar dynamic. Now the vast majority of you will be using studio headphones which have dynamic drivers. These are different because they use planar magnetic drivers. Now I'll leave a link in the description down below if you want to read about the technical differences between the two. But the consensus seems to be that these will have less distortion, they'll have a little bit more detail in them, uh, they have a quicker transient response and also some people feel that they have a punchier base we'll talk about base a little bit later on but one thing about them is they are more expensive to produce and they've undoubtedly added to the cost of these headphones but does all of that add up to a better sound well yes i do think they're better than most other studio headphones that i've heard but let's talk about that word better in the studio we don't want our headphones to make our music sound better better means they're more accurate okay and perhaps more detailed and that's 
definitely the case with these headphones. I'm not sure if it's to do with that transient response, but definitely in the mids, the high mids and the highs, wow, I could just hear things that I don't hear on other studio headphones. Now, in terms of the low end, I just want to talk with a little bit of caution about the low end. If you're looking for a sort of a big low end, something that's really pumping it, these are probably not for you. I will say though, that they are kind of punchy in a way, but I think it's to do with that transient response time, but not big, okay, and definitely not boomy. In fact, if your music does sound boomy in these headphones, it definitely is boomy. You've definitely gone too far on the low end. But I'm just gonna warn you with these, if the first time you wear them, you're expecting a huge low end, it's not what you're going to get. I rather enjoy the low end for my style of music, but you might you may wanna keep this in mind. So, at $1,299, should you get these headphones? Well, it depends. Now, before we get into this, I just want to get this out of the way. You do not need $1,300 headphones to create great mixes. These are not standing in between you and getting a Grammy. That's not what I'm about. That's not what I think. I think you should think of these as a kind of a high performance sports car. It's a really nice to have, definitely has a higher performance, great build quality, et cetera, et cetera etc. But you don't need it to get the job done necessarily. That doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I want to sort of justify why I think you would buy these if you can afford it. But for that, I need to go back to the MM500s a little bit. To summarise, in my previous video, the reason I put up for buying these was that although I thought that studio monitors was a preferable way to mix, unless you have good room treatment, I don't think that's the case. Now, if you buy decent studio monitors and then fork out for room treatment, you'll spend a lot more money than these headphones, okay? Now, for some of you, it's not even practical to do that. Your living situation um, makes that not possible. You may be in an apartment where noise is going to bother neighbours, etc, etc. So in that case, I felt that these were a much better option for mixing than using studio monitors. However, they are open-backed headphones. So they fall short when it comes to tracking, okay? These, on the other hand, are great tracking headphones. They're closed, they don't bleed a lot. So when you're recording, not a lot of sound is gonna come from the headphones and go into the microphones. Now, in my opinion, they also have a great sound for mixing as well. I'd be happy to mix with these headphones. Now, the slight caveat being that they are heavy. You're going to have to weigh up, so to speak, how long you're going to wear these for. If you're going to be tracking or mixing for more than two hours at a time, I think you're going to start to feel the weight of these a little bit. But you've got to ask yourself, should you be tracking or mixing for more than two hours at a time? It's a good argument to say you shouldn't. Anyway, I'll leave that up to you and the comments down below. If you want to find out more about why I loved and still love the MM500 from Audis, watch this video right here. I'll see you in the next video.